Let's go, Mike Denbrock, new LSU offensive coordinator. We've already done part one, uh, a statistical look at Denbrock at Cincinnati. But now let's take a look at him going up against his former team, going up against Brian Kelly. How is he as an offensive coordinator based on the tape? And this right here is one of the most creative red zone plays I think I've ever seen scoring a touchdown early versus Notre Dame here. The only issue is that it didn't count uh, because an offensive lineman went past three yards and it's an illegal man downfield penalty. You just don't see this that often. I mean, this really is creative. I've never seen this. So you're showing a hard run fake here, pulling this guy, uh, this tight end around. And honestly, there's nobody running a route outside of the running back. And no one expects to ever see the running back slip to the middle for a touchdown such as this one. And once again, if this lineman isn't illegally downfield, uh, this is one of the best red zone play calls uh, we've ever seen. So what exactly happened versus Alabama, right? A lot of you watched the game uh, knowing that Dimbrock was likely to be our next offensive coordinator. And unlike Notre Dame, Dimbrock's offense really did nothing versus Alabama. And it's, to me, in large part because of players slipping on their own accord and dropping wide open passes such as that one so we have to figure out together is Mike Dimbrock a good enough play caller to actually beat Alabama if he's given better players to work with now you guys saw this uh play this was the only play we broke down in our part one Mike Dimbrock deep dive just a lovely little slip out here to the running back excellent play call here to keep Alabama off balance so despite that drop this first drive from Cincinnati was nothing short of incredible so right here is one of the few times where we see a Cincinnati player uh making something out of nothing here this looks like an easy tackle after a nice five-yard throw but 21, I forget his last name, Tyler something, does a really good job making Jalen Armour Davis miss in the open field right there, and he picks up some really nice yards. However, the rest of the drive would turn out to be a disaster. This was first and goal right after that big play, and as you see here with the All-22, you have a loaded box, and you have your highest-ranked wide receiver, uh, Alec Pierce going one-on-one -on -one against the guy that was just burned and you'll see here this is an easy touchdown but Desmond Ritter gets the ball blocked at the line of scrimmage now once again Ritter might have felt Will Anderson who dominated Cincinnati uh, on his back and maybe it rushed this throw a little bit but this right here is a missed touchdown, and these opportunities just don't come that often. Look at the separation here. This is a walk-in touchdown. You could have floated that ball in, but once again, uh, Cincinnati wasn't able to get it done. But ironically, on the very next play, Cincinnati was gifted another opportunity here. So you see it here, second and goal. Once again, we have... Our best, biggest target, uh, 12 here, Alec, going one-on-one -on -one right here. We're running two slants, and look at where Ritter throws his football, okay? It's high, but still catchable. We need to make these 50-50 plays to beat Alabama. If you bring this ball down, you could have even hit this flat route and it would have been a foot race to the pylon but still look at that you gotta catch that ball right there and part of the reason why the ball was thrown so high is because on first down the ball got batted down so you can ask any quarterback when your ball continuously gets bat down at the line of scrimmage there was another one earlier in this drive uh you tend to start throwing the football higher so that doesn't happen then you get this third down and goal play once again will anderson just blowing crap up here they're trying to run a little screen here and this just gets blown up but on first and second down dimbrock called good plays the players 
just didn't execute. And you're going to see that throughout this film study. All right, so this was huge. I have not quit thinking about this play. And once again, we get a sack here. Uh, Alabama, DJ Dale, just a free run at the quarterback. So let's take a look at the All-22 to see what happened here because this could have been another touchdown. So this is the end zone angle, and you'll see here that Will Anderson does something called a twist stunt, okay, where the end goes inside and the tackle goes outside. So you're basically uh, an oversimplification definition is that you're just, you know, replacing each other. So what happens here is when Will Anderson goes inside, the tackle is supposed to pick up this player, the guard's supposed to pick up Anderson, tackle block down, guard pick up Anderson, and the running back picks up any A-gap scrap. So if 10 was coming through here, he would have picked him up. And if Anderson's coming through here, this running back's going to pick him up. But you notice 72 is so shook by Anderson that he doesn't even react to this defensive tackle coming through this gap. So Anderson essentially drew three blockers on this play, which leaves 94 Dale for a wide open sack. But stop it right here. As you can see, there are not one, but two open players here. So now let's bring in the all 22 here and you'll see what actually happened. So this is the twist stunt. As you can see, it's working. Uh, because Dale gets through, but there is actually a coverage bust here by Alabama, okay? Alabama loves to jump intermediate routes. They were able to do this versus us uh, because Max Johnson obviously didn't have a cannon, and a lot of our passing game were ju it was just intermediate routes. So, Alabama, I think this is a true freshman right here, and uh, the safety here jumps on this out route right here and leaves Alec, uh, what's his name, wide open, okay? Alec Pierce, all right? He's running free. And if he would have broke off and just ran a post right here, sometimes receiver coaches and offensive coordinators tell you, if you see wide open grass right here, don't continue your route, which was actually a corner, which is what he did. Instead, just run to this open field, and hopefully the quarterback sees you for a touchdown. Nevertheless, uh, this throw right here is open, right? If Ritter has time to throw this football, he is, of course, hitting uh, Pierce over the top here uh, for a big gain. Also, what's open here is this crosser. Okay, which is something else that would have been open here. Boom. So you get this football in the open field. You catch him in stride. It's one-on-one -on -one versus a safety. You're picking up no less than 10 yards here. But once again, Cincinnati's offensive line crapped the bed the entire game. And it was in large part due to Will Anderson. Boom. I'm looking at you right now. Okay. So at this point, Cincinnati should have no less than seven. But in actuality... At the very least, 10 points in this game. But look, it's still a one-possession game. And Cincinnati still has a chance to, of course, get some points right before half. So, you see here, it looks as if Alabama's in too high right here. But, post-snap, they run one high. Okay, safety goes to the middle of the field. This safety moves up closer to the line of scrimmage. And Desmond Ritter, who initially looked right, actually makes the right read... And this is open. He's looking at him, okay? He's looking at his best receiver right here who generated separation. You could throw this ball towards the sideline. You're picking up eight or nine yards here on first down. Maybe he makes this guy miss and off to the races. And another option actually opens up right here. Boom, okay? This tight end in the seam. This could have been fit in there if you wanted it. And now he's looking at him, okay? And... There's room to make this throw. Now, it's a difficult throw. You'd have to put it over the top of this linebacker. But instead, Desmond Ritter decides to not do it. 47 did a good job adjusting because Alabama lost their pass rush lane integrity. If I'm Ritter, I'm just running up here and taking these yards that I can get. 
47 did a good job squeezing right here. And Ritter's able to break contain, which isn't a bad option either. And now let's see if there's any room to throw something deep. Now, if you're Mahomes, you could make this throw. Ritter is not that, obviously. Uh, and, you know, you can't throw back to the middle of the field. So he throws actually a pretty accurate back shoulder throw right here. But, I mean, of course, uh, but we're not going to make the tough catch. And now this is what happens when you don't make the plays on these third and fives. A good defensive coordinator like Pete Golding is going to throw something really nasty at you. So what they do is they actually blitz this linebacker here. Toa Toa actually picks up any crosser scraps. They did this versus us. It was part of the reason why they got an interception right before half. They're so good, Alabama, at sitting and defending intermediate routes on these third and fives. And Saban, you know, he discusses this a lot, defending trips bunch. There's different terms that they use interstate about who guards who here. And just based on this pre-snap look, it looks as if 14 is man-to-man -man on the tight end. But no, 14 is actually man-to-man -man on the slot. Safety picks up the point man. Six picks up here. And Toa Toa moves to the middle of the field here. And you'll see what happens, okay? Was snapped, and you see it here. Toa Toa is picking up this crosser right here. So now we're doubling this tight end. That's picked up. So now we need eight to generate separation on this point right here okay and eight does a good job disguising his route but we need you into this green space right here to create separation and he just doesn't and this throw you know could have been more accurate but it was high because the blitz got home once again Cincinnati's offensive line just could not block uh, Alabama's guys and a lot of it was just due to pressure and communication. Um, it's one thing to get beat. It's another thing on these twists to continually blow the assignments. So that's what happened here. That rushed this throw here. Everything else is very much covered. And you're punting the football again. So we move ahead to third down here. And this play <laughs> is, is just another example of players not making plays. Okay, so... Um, Alabama's getting exotic again, and this time it actually gets picked up really well, okay? So Ritter sees on this third and 10 that all the defensive backs are sinking here, okay? So what does he do? He decides to take off and run, which is not really that bad of an option, okay? Because if all these defensive backs are backpedaling and sinking back, there are going to be open lanes for you to run through. The only issue is you don't want to run if you have wide open throws to underneath routes. And what what happens here is he gets hit by his own guy, okay? And he gets sacked. The issue though is boom. He has two throws he could have made that would have been a first down. His best wide receiver right here and his running back on this flat route. Just dink it right there, and he's picking up the first down easy. Dink it right there. He's picking up the first down easy. But Ritter just runs into his own offensive lineman, and it's a nasty sack. Okay? And ironically, Nick Saban had bad clock management because... Right here, if you're a coach, you want to take a timeout to not allow a Hail Mary. Cincinnati was able to get a Hail Mary opportunity, but guess what? It was sacked by Will Anderson anyway. So so it's pretty crazy, right? You watch that entire first half, and ironically, I cut out a whole lot where Ritter underthrew someone, and it cost him five yards on that last drive. Cut that play out, cut a few other missed blocks out, some other drops out. Uh, it, it's really interesting. And they come out of the half after a nice uh, zone read play with Ritter on first down. They hit a another run to pick up another first down. And then they hit this underneath route. This is just really good play calling. Alabama playing conservative with, uh, you know, a two-touchdown lead. If you're going to sink back into coverage, find the empty spot in the zone, catch it, and just pick up those yards, which is really good stuff. Here we go second and one now. And 
they're thinking, okay, they're going to run on second and short, but they don't. And look at this throw. This is such a great throw right here by Desmond Ritter. Look at that. That out route, it's a gutsy throw right there. He hits them, and they pick up another good first down here. So Denbrock's really giving him a bunch of looks. Now, we cut it out for brevity, but Denbrock called some really good runs to get us here uh, to this third and five, okay? And this actually was one of my favorite play calls. It's just not well executed right here by Desmond Ritter. Once again, in order to beat Alabama, you need your quarterback to put the ball into catchable regions just for your playmaker to have a chance to make the 50-50 catches. You saw uh, Georgia versus Alabama, and they made the 50-50 catches. They made the big plays that they needed to uh, to beat a vaunted Alabama defense. In Cincinnati, once again, just quite frankly, did not. So we rotate the receiver to this side, and look at what we have here. If you're Desmond Ritter, you like this matchup right here. They bring the safety battle right here and what Ritter decides to do is throw this football over the top into this space he's and I'm sorry this is getting a little pixelated but he's trying to hit eight into this deep corner and the ball is so poorly thrown that eight doesn't even have an opportunity it should have been a back shoulder throw or just throw this ball towards battles back shoulder and maybe you can get a pass interference call with him fighting back through the player but once again you throw the football to where no one can even have an opportunity to catch this ball but what's really interesting here is there was an even more wide open player and it's hard when you know your protection has been struggling and there's Will Anderson breathing down your neck uh, to go to your second read or your second option because this isn't a bad read. Take your 50-50 chance right here with uh, with the safety. Uh, the issue, though, is wide open over the middle. Boom. Could have hit this tight end right here. Okay? And that is another first down. Here's the issue. The twist stunt strikes again. And this time, Will Anderson just gets clean through here, basically. And he's right in Ritter's grill to where he can't get to the second option. And he. So here we are. The score's 24 to 6. This game is basically over. But I love this concept, okay? We finally get some good protection on these twist stunts. And notice what happens when we make an adjustment here. The adjustment was for just this running back. Remember earlier he was inside. These two offensive linemen pick up Anderson and the running back pick up the twisting tackle. Now you notice the reason why I'm showing you this play. When you picked up the twist stunt, this allows these vertical routes to get open. And right here we are running double post. So now this safety has to make a decision, and he actually makes an amazing play here, John Battle. And the thing is, is obviously this is this would be more advanced uh, quarterbacking here. What you should probably do as a quarterback is fake like you're going here, so the safety runs over here, and then you hit the secondary guy right here. But still, we get a nice vertical uh, passing concept. Double post right out of safety. He's got to make a decision, and once again, battles a phenomenal safety. He makes a nice open field tackle. Eight makes a good catch after the hit. You fake it there. You can hit Pierce right here, or 21, Tyler, whatever his name is, for a nice first down. So, once again, really well done. So, remember at the end of the first half, well, what do they do? They go back to the same play, because if you can have your slot receiver on a safety, Let's see if we can actually complete it this time. It's a really difficult throw to make. You're faking the flat route and then going over the top. And Pierce's job right here is to just get a little rub so we can get a little more separation. 
you want to create just a little bit more you know, of a rub right there to defend him, but Battle is reading this the whole way. But still, Ritter makes a really good throw. This ball is right on the money. We'll probably give you an extra angle here. Look at where that ball is placed. And number seven dropped it. It was a tough catch, but it was makeable. So that's really good play calling right there by Dembrock. He went back to this play, and they still just couldn't complete it. This time we actually got a good throw. We got a 50-50 opportunity, and we just couldn't bring it in. On this fourth and three, Cincinnati uh, called a timeout. And uh, this is a play they decided to run. I think they got a little too cute, but this is once again a pretty crazy play design. So remember earlier we did the play action fake versus Notre Dame and the running back leaked towards the middle of the field. So this time we're play actioning fake and normally if you're a safety, this tight end on this play action fake is leaking out here, but instead you see what he does, he instead shoots up the middle this is a touchdown right here okay fourth and three that's an easy touchdown the issue though is Alabama called basically the perfect play here once this happened Alabama was calling a nickel blitz the entire time so this edge guy is just coming hard the whole time he doesn't bite on the handoff and he's playing the quarterback the whole way Okay, if he would have been on the handoff, this is an easy touchdown. Ritter is seeing if this is open, and he just doesn't have time to throw it here. And once again, he would have had time, and he could have potentially made this guy miss or step up back into this pocket. But once again, guess who's breaking through? It's Will Anderson again. This offensive lineman just could not handle him. And he is sacked. See, he could have potentially broken this arm tackle right here and slid out here and then eventually thrown to the tight end. But no. And either way, this would have been a legal man downfield if he would have thrown it. So uh, that was just a messy play call all around. So let's put a bow on this game. Once again, this is the drive you just saw. Tucker, a really good player for them. You, you've just got to make this play, though, on the biggest stage in order to beat Alabama. You know, we saw a three-star receiver for Georgia, Donis Mitchell, make an extremely difficult catch uh, to beat the Alabama Crimson Tide and just beat any, you know, major upset. You need your single-digit playmakers to uh, make those plays. And, you know, Cincinnati, not only there, but really in the trenches, struggled. Um, they just could not get it done. And I, honestly, after re-watching the Bama game, I give Mike Dimbrock a lot of credit. I thought he called an excellent game, even on this play right here. So Tucker makes that drop. Let's get his confidence back up and get a nice jet sweep play here to the boundary. The issue here, and this guy's in the portal. I'm very interested in him. Sanders, a former five-star. He's playing end. He's actually a linebacker. Watch him just blow this tackle into the backfield and stretch this play out. It gets cut off there, but they tackled him for uh, Toa Toa raced in here and make this tackle for no gain. And, uh, you know, that's a backup doing that to their backup off its alignment. And this is a play you obviously just saw right here. And once again, I'm playing these plays in slow motion. Obviously, the game moves really fast, and it's really tough to block the Will Andersons of the world. But simply put, Cincinnati's off its line. And look, this is not harsh. This is not me, you know, digging on their graves or anything like that. They were superb all year long, except versus Alabama. So uh, this is just a classic example of players over scheme. Your scheme does matter, right? It is important to call the right plays when you really need to call those plays, such as, once again, going back to Georgia, Todd Monken called up the vertical passing game when Alabama least expected it after the Stetson Bennett fumble. So coaching and play calling and all of that matters, but players matter more. You guys saw with your own eyes, Dimbrock called fine plays. You got to make 50-50 catches. You got to make tacklers miss. 
you have to be able to block simple twist stunts and if you can't do that you just have no shot and Cincinnati was really good at that all year long they just could not get it done versus Bama I don't know if the moment was too big for him I don't know uh, if they were just too psyched up for this game they just did not execute a game plan I thought would have at least put 14 17 ish points on the board at the very least and you guys saw it for yourself you saw two drop touchdowns they were both difficult catches but you got to make it and you saw some other missed opportunities that just came from um player mistakes now of course Dem Brock could have called a better game he could have called a better game earlier this year versus Indiana and then look um, if you want to see your statistical breakdown of that game and many more you can find our part one Dem Brock deep dive floating in your face in just a second but the bottom line is this film study actually showed that Den Brock can call a pretty good game versus the elites now can he and Brian Kelly develop a quarterback that is as good and hopefully better than Desmond Ritter we'll see uh, I, I could make a strong argument that Ritter was the best quarterback that either one of them has ever had so that's going to be very key Obviously, wide receiver talent, you're not going to have to worry about that. I'll also hopefully see better tight end development. And obviously, you know, you, you have the extra element of new cooks in the kitchen, right? Joe Sloan is going to be the quarterback's coach from Louisiana Tech. And, uh, you know, there's mixed reviews about Joe, but that's why I'm reaching out to a lot of our North Louisiana viewers and people that are around Louisiana Tech football. Give me your thoughts on Joe Sloan. I think he is pretty well respected uh, in the coaching community, and he actually kind of excites me uh, being in the state of Louisiana and getting this huge opportunity for his career. And he's also younger, and I think that's going to be good because obviously Den Brock's in his late 50s, and Joe Clo- da, da, da. Joe Sloan is in his mid-30s. And then, of course, you have Brian Kelly's input into this as well. Brian Kelly, of course, you know, his career, the one thing he hasn't ever really had is just can't miss elite quarterback play. Can they find that guy? Uh, can, honestly, you know, I mean, I, I think we've mentioned this uh, before. Uh, Ritter uh, is, is really good. And can LSU find someone as good as Ritter, if not potentially better than Desmond Ritter? So those things are going to be absolutely key. How does Denbrock get along well with Sloan and Kelly? And hopefully it's really, really good. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Obviously, comment down below your thoughts on today's film study. I'm dead serious. Obviously, these film studies get deep. We did a lot of All-22. We did a lot of broadcast angle stuff. So, please give me your thoughts down below. It is Power Hour LSU BAM! Oh, we're doing some chicken parm tonight. Let's 